Shalom, everyone. How is everybody today? I want to speak to y'all um, about giving yourself as a living sacrifice, your flesh, in other words. Now, John chapter 4, starting in verse 31, says, In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples to one another, Has any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto him, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, There are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say to you, Lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. Both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying, One soweth and another reapeth. I sent to you to reap, that whomever ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entertained, entered into their laborers. Amen. So, he says, I have meat that ye not know of. You know, Jesus focused so much on his ministry, on his work. He was consumed with it. He barely found time to eat for himself or even take care of himself at sometimes. A lot of times you, you would read that the, his disciples would urge him to eat, right? Well, what would it be like for us as believers today if we focused on... Our total focus was on the work of the harvest in the kingdom, right? See, many times we are not just focused on the harvest of ministry, but we are often focused on the world, the family, the pleasures of the world, and yet trying to take care of our family, trying to make sure that they have enough food to eat and everything like that. We are consumed with everything else around us. We should not have that focus on ourselves, right? So what does it mean to fully give yourself over to Christ? Fully surrendering your life, but also every aspect of your body. When we give ourselves over to Christ... Total surrender. It means all. Surrendering even what we eat, what we drink, what we say. Every aspect that we live in. See, in John chapter 4, verse 31, Jesus said, I have meat to eat that ye not know of. And Jesus said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. He had a race too. He had to run the race as well. He had a goal in ministry. He must fulfill everything and he mustn't tarry. You know when Jesus said to his disciples, Earlier, when he sent out the 70, he said to them, you know, go out on the road and don't greet nobody. You know, just keep focus straight ahead. You know, he wasn't saying, you know, to be rude, but he was telling them the urgency of don't stop and have idle chit chat. Stay focused on the mission at hand, being focused on reaping the souls for the harvest. You know, the, the flesh, the flesh really wants to focus on pleasuring itself. And it really wants the comforts of life. Remember Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's so true. 
there there's nothing today that would um go against that saying we all have a spirit a willing spirit to go after the things that god wants us to do but yet our flesh hinders us but what if we had the flesh that christ had because literally christ crucified his flesh right christ crucified not only his flesh physically but spiritually too every aspect of him he dedicated to god and the kingdom and the ministry he did everything that he could do for the kingdom of god right so he says my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That's my food. That's my nourishment. When I fulfill having this food and nourishment in me, when it fills me, I am strengthened even more. And I can keep going and going and going. Jesus wasn't about tarrying and waiting. He was about all action and keep pressing forward the kingdom of God. He barely found time to sleep. Remember when he was on the boat um, crossing over the Sea of Galilee? Think about it. That's pretty much the only time he would have to rest. He was tired. He let his flesh go. He crucified his flesh to such a point. He's still human, obviously. And, the, and being on the boat was the only moment of peace for that time, even in the storm. The disciples said to him, how can you sleep in this storm? We're about to die. But Jesus knew that they were not going to die. He was just wanting to sleep a little bit. You know? But, you know, he said, okay. He said, peace be still. He said, ye of little faith. He had the faith already that they were not going to die. He only wished that his disciples had that faith too. If we had the same type of mentality that Christ has, we always have that saying, what would Jesus do? Being a Christian means to act like Christ, to be like Christ, right? So, what does that mean? It literally means crucifying yourself. Your entire body must surrender its fleshly desires of the world. Everything that you are is now dedicated to God. You are a new creation in Him. We are changed. And being changed... We, in our flesh, die daily. But how much more could we crucify our flesh if we were at a point to where we were doing so much for the kingdom of God that you would even forget to eat and sleep even? You would still have the strength, but man, that's powerful. Jesus... Jesus' nourishment, his meat, was to do the will of the Father. And if we as believers could have that same mentality, mm, that mentality could really be powerful. He could do a 40-day fast. How many people say that they, they could do a 40-day fast? You know, many people have done 40-day fasts. Jesus is the example we go by and live by. People who've come out of 40-day fasts, you know, they've said it is a very intense thing. It's very rough. But, you know, think about it, doing it in the desert and constantly being warred at and tempted by Satan. Generally, Today's believers have brothers and sisters around them encouraging them when they're on a fast, right? 
you know, you have these people in church who say, okay, we're going to do a fast, right? They, the bodies of churches come together and say, we'll do a fast. You have people encouraging you in the body when you go through these fasts, generally. But Jesus did it by himself. And not only by himself, but being tempted by Satan constantly. Until finally, when Satan left him, an angel had to minister to him. Angel's food from heaven, right? Manna. The manna from heaven. I wouldn't doubt that that's what they gave him to eat right after he had finished his uh, fast. But the bread from heaven strengthened him, right? And how much more could we be strengthened if we just applied that? People say that's very crazy today. People can't survive generally without food for long, uh, you know, you know, for not very long time. That's true. But if we as believers focus more on the kingdom of God and his righteousness, when it says seek the kingdom, we're seeking something in the heavenly realm. That's not of our own flesh. We're not seeking to satisfy our flesh because Christ said, when you have all these treasures on earth, they're not coming with you into the kingdom. You'll have your reward here, but they're not going to help you uh, when you try to go into the afterlife. That's why you must seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek everything that is of God. Seek his ways and not the ways of the world because of the ways of the world is of flesh. You transform your mind into the heavenly ways of God, the heavenly kingdom. You're living a whole new life and that's what it's supposed to be here on earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, he wants us to transform the will of his, of what he has in heaven here onto us on earth. It's what happens when you are changed through Christ. You become Christ-like. And there are degrees of this, you know, sanctification is when you can walk daily and boldly. When you are sanctified by the blood of the Lamb, and not constantly fall into the snares of the enemy. Because you would not be walking by the flesh then. So, crucify the flesh. And as Jesus said, you know, if we can crucify the flesh... And if your will is to do the will of the Father in heaven, he will sustain you and feed you the meat that you need, the nourishment that you need. It's amazing to think about. He says, I have meat to eat. Who fed him, they said, Doing the will. He ministered unto the woman at the well. She needed to know about the kingdom of God and the river, the living water. And when Christ told her about the living water, it fed him. It sustained him. Something in the heavenlies was released unto Christ and he was sustained and nourished. How much more if we could start acting like that? If we would start letting go of our worldly thought process of, yeah, but. But there is no but in the kingdom of God because Christ said you can do all things through him. You can do all things. You just got to crucify your flesh to do it. 
God bless you, my brothers and sisters.